Welcome to Waka Wednesday on Hay on Haven. I'm Dawn. Today our theme is the moon. Our selection this time is from chapter 8 of the Genji Monogatari, Hana no En. I've transcribed the text of the poems from each of our translators in the description down below. We're once again discussing three poems with the moon as a central theme. Let's set the stage. Genji is thinking of the affair with the lady from the night before in the Kokiden. He examines her fan, the one he exchanged for his as a token of their tryst. It's a trifold fan painted in the cherry style, one side white, the other red, and on the red side, a misty moon reflected in a lake. He writes a poem on the fan. This is Seidensteger's translation. I had not known the sudden loneliness of having it vanish, the moon in the sky of dawn. Genji is consumed by this brief affair, wondering how he can find out which of the Kokiden consort's younger sisters he had slept with, despite it being in poor taste to be involved with a woman of a house that bears him ill will. He compares her to the misty moon at dawn, Oborozukyo, and this is the name that she is known by for the rest of the tale. At the end of the chapter, there is an archery contest followed by a banquet celebrating wisteria blooms at the villa of the minister of the left, Udaijin, Oborozukyo's father. Having arrived rather late and making quite the fashionable entrance, Genji plays music for a while, but then pretends to be ill from drinking. He withdraws from the celebration and makes his way to where his two princess half-sisters and the other women are seated, enjoying the wisteria blossoms. He sings a song, the Saibara Ishikawa, but instead of his obi, or belt, being taken, he says ogi, fan. Oborozukyo reveals herself through her sighs, and Genji goes to her. Taking her hand under her curtain of state, he composes a poem, this is Washburn's translation. I wander Mount Irusa, unsure where you are, wondering if I will ever see you again, not knowing at all where the bow-shaped moon has set. The lady cannot help but reply with, if your heart is as true as an arrow in flight, if you care for me, then how could you wander lost, even without a bow-shaped moon to light your way? This exchange has a second theme tied in. The lovers evoke both archery and the moon. The archery references tie the poems to the occasion, the archery tournament held that day, with even the moon being bow-shaped. Mount Irusa is a real place, now known as Irisa, which lies to the northwest of Hienkyo, modern Kyoto. In Seidenstecker's translation of Genji's poem, he calls the mountain Arrow Mount, which makes me think that there is something to do with arrows or archery in the meaning of the name of Irusa. These two poems are an excellent example of composing a poem that expresses one's feelings that is appropriate for the time and place. What do you think? And now for my tonka inspired by the selection. Waiting for the clouds, slowly clearing with the breeze to reveal your face, but the misty moon at dawn appears veiled and slips away. What has inspired you this week? Share your poem in the comments below. Thank you for watching. Subscribe if you'd like to explore the Heian period of Japan with me through poetry.